Tag Ring is 13. This is 17th Annual Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We're in uncharted territory tonight. We have a record crowd. We sold 350 tickets. This is the largest crowd we've ever had, the largest crowd that's ever been at the Coastal Country Club. So I thank everybody for coming tonight. This goes, goes to show you what it is to be a Coastal Red Raider. Once a Raider, always a Raider. So I thank you all for attending tonight. The committee and I really put in a lot of hard work getting this thing together, and you can see by the record turnout. And we've done a big thank you to Gene Bernight, Greg Pedro, and myself. Mike Lou, we've done more shuffling of tickets in the last three days than I think the dealers do in Vegas. So we've accommodated, we've like we made 55 people, extra people happy tonight. So hopefully you'll be back in the future. Uh, we got a good group of inductees tonight. With tonight's inductees, there'll be now 184 members in the Sports Hall of Fame. There's a 12 inductees going in tonight, along with the 1975 Girl State Runner Up softball team as we see in the Special Recognition Award. So uh, let's meet tonight's inductees. First off, the Max Stuber Award winner this year is Norm Smith, escorted by Dave Stuber, the Stuber family. Next, we have Mr. Charlie Hicks, escorted by his track coach, Ross Kersey. <laughs> Representative Joe Bogar is Joe's brother, Jerry, escorted by Bill Richards. <laughs> Next, we have Kalina Gray, escorted by Carl Smith. <laughs> and the first of all, old-timers, and Joan, this is not, I'm not talking about you now. Okay. Representing her pearl is his niece, Joan Jones, escorted by Pam Walsh. Our second old timer for tonight is Whoops Pearl, representing Whoops is his daughter, Mary Haybettler, escorted by Mike Logue. <laughs> Next we have Davida Phillips, escorted by Joy Renfrew. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Country Club. Rich Saylor, escorted by Dave Rohde. <laughs> and we have Ron Artis, escorted by Scott Kershey. <laughs> Next, we have Mallory Lyons, escorted by Paul Garver. And we have Mr. C.J. Gray, escorted by Rob Fisher. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Mr. Vinnie Bellanomi, escorted by Ernie Perella. <laughs> All right, right now I want to introduce our, uh, our Hall of Famer, Mr. Marty Connor for the invocation, Pledge of Allegiance, and singing of God Bless America. Shall we stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and joining me singing the God Bless America. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to thee with grateful hearts, mindful of all the many wonderful things you have given us. Tonight we are here to honor the outstanding athletic ability of a lot of new members to the Coastal High School Hall of Fame. Tonight we are also taking the time to 
introduce uh, those things that we hold dear. And one of the things is this outstanding uh, banquet every year is the highlight of the, of the Coatesville uh, area. And now, dear Lord, bless his food to our use and us to thy continued service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Do the pledges of allegiance to the flag. Our flags in flags in the closet. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual and liberty and justice. amazing. The man is 95 years old. <laughs> Marty was the very first honor soloist for the Meister Singers, 1937-38. As much as I love music, I can't sing. I mean, Marty puts us all to shame. I sing in the shower and the water turns cold. So thank you, Marty. Appreciate it. Just a reminder, tonight's festivities are being filmed by Al Ray Johnson in 3CT Live. So it'll be available for viewing in probably a week or two, and it'll be linked to our website, so you can watch all the festivities for tonight. And um, tonight's audio is being produced by Daryl Hutchinson in the back. Dinner at each of your tables is going to be split in half. We have 10 of the tables, so you'll get half chicken, half beef. You guys decide on what you want. So, so enjoy tonight's dinner. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Like I said in the beginning, I thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, I'd like to have a round of applause and a great big thank you for the Coachville Country Club for the meal and serving 350 people here tonight. They've done an outstanding job. I hope everybody enjoyed yourself with the meal. It, it's, it's been quite an affair. I, somehow we, we pulled it off. The Country Club has done a great job on that. Uh, a couple things, I, a couple people I want to thank before we can get started. Our ticket chairman, Gene Bernight, Greg DePedro, and guys have done a fantastic job. <clears throat> Especially with the, with the late acquisition of tickets. Greg has probably shuffled around more tickets in the last couple days at the flower shop than the dealers have in Las Vegas. <laughs> so, but you know what? We made 54 people happy tonight that probably would have normal, so we're hoping that they all come back in the future. And that was our aim, to make sure that this is a fair for everybody here. I mean, this is Coatesville right here. It's not what you see in the reading the papers. It, it's not what you see, excuse me, on TV or anything else. This is Coatesville. Once a Raider, always a Raider. And with the amount of people here tonight, that's a testament to being from Coatesville, 
Coastal Hill Area Senior High School, Scott High School, um, the people that are going in, the inductees. I mean, when I, we announced this cl uh, class tonight, I knew that we were going to have a big crowd tonight. I didn't expect 350 people. But as you can see, everything turned out fantastic. I hope everybody had a good time and enjoyed yourself tonight. <clears throat> A uh, couple of notables attendees I want to uh, make note of tonight. Uh, State Representative Harry Lewis is here. I don't know where, I don't know where Harry got. Oh, there he is in the back. Harry is our own Hall of Fame track coach. That's because they have me sitting all the way in the back. <laughs> Not running for re-election tonight, Harry. <laughs> uh, Superintendent of Coastal Area School District, Dr. Kathy Tashner and her husband, Doug, over here in the corner. Uh, principal of the 910 Center, Mr. Brian Changer and his wife, Lauren. Over here, Brian. And one other unusual guest tonight, I can't say it's unusual, but Rick Lockery is the recorder of deeds. Right here is Rick for Chester County Recorder of Deeds. And what Rick has done tonight is made arrangements with the Chester County Commissioners to issue a proclamation or document from the Chester County Commissioners honoring all tonight's inductees. So not only will they get a plaque, they also get, they also get an inductee from Chester, they also get a seal from the Chester County Citation from Chester County Commissioners. So Rick. Thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> a couple other things. Um, as you know, and talking to all our committee members, we tout this thing as a Coastal Sports Reunion. Uh, like I said, we have 184 members in, in the Hall of Fame. And tonight we have, from what I can gather, 33 to 35 former Hall of Fame inductees come back again tonight. This is what it is. It's a coastal sports reunion. So what I would like to do, rather than miss anybody, any member here that's, that is inducted into the Coastal Sports Hall of Fame, please stand and be recognized. And amongst these are two members that I want to make special notices. Right here, Mr. Marty Flynn, Mr. Gene Bernight. They're the guys that come up with the idea for this. They're the ones, the originators for the Sports Hall of Fame. Marty, Gene, without them two guys, six, 17 years ago, this might not be here, but they're the ones that come up with the idea. Got a couple other members, such as Mr. Kershey, Joy Renfro, and all of them is involved, and this is what we have. I mean, we've really taken this committee really forward in the last 17 years. So I thank you guys on an on a idea that really has really blossomed. Like I said, we have Hall of Fame members that have come back and there is one thing that I want to introduce. And we have members of the 1962-63 basketball team that have come back to honor Mr. Ron Artis tonight. And them guys are here tonight. So guys, would you please stand and be recognized. 62-63 basketball team. That's 50 some years ago. Skokie, you gotta take that red coat off, man. You stole my thunder, Skokie. Once a Raider, always a Raider. You're right, Skokie. Uh, one other thing I like to say is, and we just found this out a little while ago, uh, I'm sure a lot of you knew Robbie Titai. Robbie Titai was a Red Raider basketball player uh, back in the 60s. He graduated in 66 and he played with a lot of these guys. Robbie passed away recently, a couple, couple months ago. And we just found this out, Ross announced it at the last meeting, that Robbie's wife, <clears throat> excuse me, has donated $20,000 to the Coates Warrior High School for a scholarship for 21 year scholars, 21,000 scholarships for a basketball player from the Coast Area High School. I think that's <laughs> I think that's that's extraordinary. That's what it means to be a Coastal Red Raider. 
I don't know Robbie's wife. I don't know if she was, if she was from Coatesville, but man, what a gesture. Uh, to all my committee members, one thing, we are, have a program tonight. See Scott Kersey. Scott has a program tonight. We want all our committee members to sign a program in honor of Bob Fleck. Bob Fleck is in very ill health right now. He can't be here tonight as much as he wanted to. But all our committee members, please see Scott if you haven't signed a program book for Bob Fleck tonight. And in your program book, I know people ask, ask us and the committee members all the time, how somebody get nominated? On page 48 of your program book, you have a criteria sheet. Anybody can nominate anyone that they think is deserving. Just fill out that criteria sheet the best that you can. Of course, some things can't be remembered from 40, 50 years ago, and we certainly don't know everybody. But fill out that sheet, get it to a committee member, and that committee member will submit it to the committee for consideration for the upcoming year's ballot. So uh, at the conclusion of tonight's banquet, I want all the, all the inductees or the representative up front right here for a group picture. And afterwards, as soon as we're all well done, the bar in the back will remain open. So if anybody wants to stay around for an hour or so, the bar in the back will be open after we're done. So with that, let's get started. At this time, I'd like to call upon Jeff Chalfant. Jeff Chalfant is the chairman of the Special Recognition Committee for the girls' 1975 softball team. Jeff? <laughs> Good evening and welcome. Uh, would all the 1975 girls please come up? Uh, six, six years ago, the committee decided to uh, give special recognition to a high school team from Coatesville that had one of those special seasons. And it's an honor this evening to uh, pay special recognition to the 1975 girls PIAA Chase Championship runner-up. These uh, Raiderettes going into the state championship game had won 40 of their previous 42 games, which is a pretty phenomenal statistic. So uh, tonight it's our honor to recognize these former Raiderettes. And at this time, I'm very pleased to turn the program over to the coach of that team and Hall of Fame member, Jory Renfrew. It doesn't get any better than this, I'll tell you. What a great start to the uh, Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank the members of the Hall of Fame for inducting, or not inducting, but uh, honoring the 1975 championship softball team. This group of ladies were dedicated, they were athletic, they could play the game, and they wanted to do nothing but win. They entered the 75 season with a record of 25 wins and no losses, which is quite a feat. <clears throat> and that year I told the girls, this year finally after Title IX came through, uh, the PIAA decided it's time for the girls to have a state softball playoff. So the girls said to me, Coach, we're going to win all our games, and we're going to win the state title and the district title. I said, okay, that's great. So we proceeded, <laughs> so we proceeded to lose our first two games of the season. <laughs> That kind of burst our bubble a little bit. But they continued then to win the remaining games to get to the districts. They were in the district final. They beat a very good, strong North Penn high school team to win the district title, the first ever for girls in District 1. And if anyone knows anything about North Penn and their sports program, they are good. Then we continued to win our games. We got into the state final at Penn State. We won our games. We got to the state final. And then the skies opened up and it rained. So we had to leave Penn State that, and go home for a week and think about this and practice and get ready to win the first ever state softball championship. Uh, they brought the game down in this area. Uh, because both of the teams were from this area. One uh, was from Parkland and, of course, us. 
So we played the game. We were leading three to one, gone into the bottom of the seventh, two outs, and I would have bet everything I had that we were going to win this game. But it didn't work out that way. They had a great season. We were the first ever girls softball team to win the state PIAA softball tournament uh, championship. And that's why these ladies are being recognized tonight. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Sue Ahern, who is a member of the High School uh, Hall of Fame and was a catcher for four years, uh, she would just like to say a few words. Sue? <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Ramfrew. Um, on behalf of all my teammates, I want to thank the Hall of Fame for this uh, tribute and for recognizing the accomplishments of our runner -up, state runner-up softball team. It was truly an honor for, for the Raider Rap team to play in the first PIAA championship some 41 years ago. Um, but it's equally humbling and an honor to be here tonight to be um, recognized here by the Hall of Fame. Um, like Mrs. Renfrew said, it was a long time ago we started that 75 season. And, and I'm not so sure the idea of the first PIAA playoffs was the pressure as much as, you know, our teachers and classmates kept saying, hey, keep that streak going, keep that streak going. Um, so we did face a little bit of pressure going into it, and, you know, we uh, started out the season not too good, as Mrs. Renfrew alluded to. But um, thanks to our coach, Mrs. Renfrew, and our, the leadership of our co-captains, which was um, Becky Davis and our Hall of Fame pitcher, Deb Marshall, um, we were able to get back on track. And as Mrs. Renfrew said, we won the rest of our regular season games, districts, and made it to that first state championship game. We had a lot of talented players, that's for sure. But we never would have reached this accomplishment without our great coach, Mrs. Renfrew. She taught us all the fine points of the game, um, made us better players. But most of all, she taught us how to work hard and play as a team. Um, she was always encouraging us to do better. I think hustle was her favorite word. She encouraged us to hustle all the time. And she always encouraged us to be there for each other. Um, our 75 team is sort of like a family. Um, I remember a lot of times going up to the Renfrew's house uh, particularly during that championship playoff week, and they had a big air hockey table, and we used to go out there and play air hockey. Mr. Renfrew would play with us. Mrs. Renfrew would sit there and just shake her head, wondering how she ever was going to get rid of us. <laughs> um, and when I spoke to Mrs. Renfrew a couple weeks ago, she said Carol was going to be up, and I was glad because I wanted to thank Carol for sharing her mom and dad with us back in those years. Um, the only thing that would make this night better or more special is if Mr. Renfrew was here with us. Um, I'm sure he's looking down on us and very proud, proud of our team and the recognition tonight. Um, without, our, without a doubt, our accomplishments could not have been a reality, and we wouldn't be here tonight without Mrs. Renfrew. At the start of each season, she would always give us our rules. Um, we had, and I think our last year it went to two pages. Um, <laughs> you know, it's things like, you know, you can't be late for practice. You know, if you were scho scholastically ineligible, you were cut from the team. There was one if you uh, missed the bus, keep on walking. Um, but I always recall rule number 10, and it was, Mrs. Renfrew was a strong advocate of always telling us we're there representing not just our team, but our school and our community. And rule number 10 was conduct yourself as a lady at all times, both on and off the field. And Mrs. Renfrew never asked anything of us that, didn't epitom that she didn't epitomize herself. She made us all better individuals, better teammates, um, a better team and winners both on and off the field. And for that, Mrs. Renfrew, we all want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. We just want to thank you for always being there for us and for all the things you did for us all the time and for making the 1975 Raiderette runner-up softball team a class act. And from all my teammates, I want to thank you again from the Sports Hall of Fame and everyone in attendance for, um, for this wonderful tribute tonight. You know, we're truly proud to be part of the Coastal Area High School's great sports heritage and tradition. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, ladies. Uh, now I'd like to call up on David Stuber, Tina Stuber, and a member of the Stuber family for the J. Max Stuber Memorial Award. Mm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly an honor and a pleasure to spend this evening with all of you. Back in 2008, the John Malcolm Stuber Memorial Sports Award was established to honor a person or persons who have dedicated their life to sports in the Coatesville area. I look out here tonight and I see so many familiar faces, friends of my fathers and colleagues, but I'm sure there's many of you here tonight who did not know who J. Malcolm Stuber was or what he stood for. John Malcolm Stuber is one of Coatesville's native sons. He was born 614 Main Street, grew up with his older brother in the attic apartment in their, in their house. He was educated through the Coatesville schools, skipped 11th grade, but swimming was his thing, and he's pretty good at it. As a matter of fact, on the weekends, all the boys from town would come up and swim about 600 yards from where we all sit right now at the end of the reservoir. And in his 12th grade year, along with three of his buddies, Guy Griswold, James Clymer, and Reds Pauling, represented Coatesville and won the 160-yard freestyle relay in the States. And Dad even took third that same year. Scott Kershey asked me once what this award means to me, and it was difficult to put it in perspective because Dad bled black and red, and if he could be here right now, he would probably say how proud he is of all of us, that we have always fought the good fight, we have always ran and swam a fast race, and we have always kept the faith together. Dad belongs to the ages now, but he also belongs to each and every one of us. This year's recipient of the Max Tuber Memorial Award is Norm Smith, an athlete, a coach, faculty manager, teacher, mentor, representing the very qualities defined by my father, dedicated, motivated, patient, principled, inspirational. I recently spoke with Norm and asked him to share a few special insights that were not printed in your program tonight. And he shared the following with me, and I'd like to share with you. Coaching was another venue for using teaching skills. It is so wonderful to see students and athletes use things they learned in the classroom or in athletic competition to become successful in their adult lives. As I look back on my career in Coatesville, I don't feel it is over since I still run into students and their children who I also taught. The best thing that happens to me is when a student or athlete comes up to me and says, Hi, Mr. Smith. This makes me happy that I was a teacher and a coach in Coatesville. I really liked Mr. Scaringi's phys ed class. He influenced me to become a PE teacher. At the time, travel to space was in the future, so I had a dream to be the first phys ed teacher on the moon. Well, Norm did not make it to the moon. <laughs> but we are grateful he landed right here in Coatesville. So on behalf of the Coastal Sports Hall of Fame Banquet and the Stuber family, including my nieces and nephew, Taraman, Aubrey, and Jacob, it's our honor to present the Max Stuber Memorial Award to Norm Smith. Hi, I'm Norm Smith, and that's it. <laughs> My wife was giving me this sign already, <laughs> and I had to save some time for Rich Saylor, because he, he needs a little extra time for his speech. <laughs> Seriously, though, um, whenever someone gets an award, I always feel that there are many, many other people who should be getting the award with him or her. 
And I'm going to mention some names, no stories, or I would be here to, all night. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my family uh, for the, all the late meals and everything that goes into being an athletic director. Um, Mr. Stuber was the athletic director when I was at Coatesville, and he did an excellent job making sure all the athletic events went off as scheduled. And as it turned out, I became faculty manager, and I tried to do the things that he, Chuck Carroll, um, Brian Changer, Dave Rohde, all were very important in making sure that I was doing the job that I should be doing, and I appreciate all of their help. I'd like to thank my wife. Uh, she makes sure I did things correctly, um, <laughs> as wives tend to do. <laughs> Mr. Scaringi was my first experience with a coach, um, and as Tina elaborated, my goal was to be the first phys ed teacher on the moon. Um, that didn't happen, obviously, but another coach at North Brandywine, Mr. Carr, was also very important in helping me to actually begin to think about coaching. And I appreciate their confidence and their help also. When I started in Coatesville, Mr. Zinzarella was the principal at Gordon. I got the student teach there, and he was pretty pleased with how things worked out. He offered me a position, and I gladly accepted because I was very happy to remain in Coatesville. During my career, I coached many sports, and there were many coaches that, during my first year, really helped. Uh, Mr. Ruffing helped me with soccer. Uh, Mr. Dietrich helped me with my phys ed teaching. And of course, these are all people that you, I'm sure, have heard of somewhere along the line. As I continued coaching, there were many other coaches that helped me in basketball, Mr. Kershey, Chuck Carroll, Scoogie. These were all people that really helped me as far as coaching goes. Baseball, I had help with Bill Mendenhall, Paul Changer, Hal Ziegler. And of course, our cross country teams also did very well. They won some state champ they won a state championship and a national championship. Keith Andrew took the time to come down to Gordon and ask my partner, Gwen Kettner and I, to try and provide two runners a year for him at the high school level. And as it turned out, they wound up getting two kids almost every year from Gordon who ran cross country, and they wound up doing very well. So my coaching career depended not just on me, but on a lot of help from others in the district. And I appreciate that very much to all of those people. As far as my faculty manager's job, um, Chuck Carroll was extremely helpful in making sure that I did things correctly, making sure I learned the things that you need to do and in a fashionable manner so that we represented the district and Coatesville sports in a positive manner. Dave Rohde was also a tremendous help uh, offering advice and he has been a tremendous contributor to the school district. I'd also like to thank the many, 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 many students that I had. I see quite a few here tonight that I had. Some I just taught, some I coached, and many of them went on to win state championships. Boys basketball team, girls basketball team, and the cross country team. It's very, very rewarding to see those students become successes in their adult life. 
And I want to thank the committee for considering me for the honor. And I'd like to thank the Stuber family for allowing me to represent all the things that their father, grandfather did for the Coastal Area School District. And I see the sign, so I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Norm. Congratulations, buddy. After every inductee's uh, done, see Mr. DePedro, and he'll take you downstairs for a picture downstairs. We were thinking about bringing that hook that they have that you had on TV about, you know what, you're too long. Oh, I forget, what is that TV show? The Gong Show, yeah. You're done. <laughs> okay, our first inductee tonight, Mr. Charlie Hicks. Come on up, Charlie. Right here, bud. Charlie was a dual sports star back in the mid-60s. Charlie could, was so good in football and track that he could have been nominated in either one, but we selected him as track. Uh, as you'll see, there's a very in-depth thing on everything that Charlie accomplished, so we'll just touch on a few. He was, he was the Spike Chu champion in the 60-yard dash, and that record still stands after 50 years. Charlie was an amazing sprinter. Yeah. Charlie was the winner to meet the champions in the 60-yard dash, which qualified him for the National Indoor Championship at Madison Square Garden. And after getting off to a bad start, he did finish third. Uh, Charlie was, a, for three years, he was part of the winning Chessmont 440 and mile relay teams. He was a triple gold winner in the Chessmont Championships, winning a 100 to 220 and part of the, 8, 800, or the 880 relay. He placed third in the state meet at the 220 at Penn State University. And he was also a member of the record-breaking mile relay team that won a state championship. And Charlie ran a 49-8 for his quarter mile leg. Unfortunately, that team was disqualified for a minor technicality, but it was later overturned. So they were the state champion for that year. Mm. Charlie's football accomplishments were, were some. Charlie had the pleasure of starting as a 10th grader alongside the great Paul Hudson from Coatesville. Uh, and excuse me, correct me if I'm wrong, but Charlie was a halfback. Paul Hudson was a fullback. Your next fullback was Dwight Gilley. Yes. Okay, two of the most punishing fullbacks we've ever had. You don't see fullbacks in, anymore. But for Paul Hudson and Dwight Gilley, uh, that, was, that, was an amazing, that was an amazing team. Charlie was named all Chessmont team in his senior year, both on offense and defense, all state teams. 65, he led the Chessmont championship to Coastville for the first time in many years. All first team all inquire, all daily news for both offense and defense. And so in his senior year, he was amongst the top of the states in rushing, touchdowns, interceptions. That's what you call a dual-purpose football player. I was reading an article on some information for Charlie and a couple comments that coaches had made for, on Charlie. Charlie was a sleeper in football and an unimpressive practice runner in track. <laughs> I won't name any names, but then I got to thinking, they, practice, is that, where I, is that where Iverson got it from? You're talking about practice. <laughs> it was just a sleeper, right? just <laughs> But when it came to play, Charlie was amongst the best. And then I, I read a newspaper article that said, Charlie Hicks outside running was the most spectacular round and was endowed with natural moves for broken field running that takes some years to develop. So here is Charlie 50 years ago, and then that tradition just carried on with Mark McWilliams, CJ Gray, and now you got another one down there at high school, Aaron Young. I mean, the, the guys, once they hit the hole and outside, they were gone, that sprinters, Speed just took him off. Uh, Charlie was named the Hugh McDevitt Awardee for the most outstanding athlete in the Chessmont League, 1964-65, and a couple years before that, Paul Hudson received that award. So Charlie received a full scholarship to Moorhead State University for football and track. After graduating, he had opportunity to go to the city of Philadelphia and coach down there, and where he had a very successful career. So it is my great pleasure to introduce for, Coast, for nomination to Coastal Sports Hall of Fame, Charlie Hicks. <laughs>
Thank you. That's longer than my speech. <laughs> Somebody said, that's good. <laughs> I would like to thank the Coastville Hall of Fame Committee on being inducted into this year's class with all the great athletes that has come out of Coatesville to be recognized as uh, one of means a lot. I would like to give a special thanks to the Crutchvilles for their help in this endeavor and Mr. Earl Soup Johnson for his persistence. Soup, appreciate everything you've done. Uh, I'd like to thank my lovely wife and my family and friends and congratulations to the other inductees. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Bob Bowman, who was my football coach, for his inspiration, and Mr. Ross Kersey, my track coach, for his guidance. Coach Kersey, whatever you're doing, whatever you're taking, keep doing it. You look, you look great. Uh, I see Hubie Marshall, he's in the crowd, and I know you coached him, and I know Hubie is 90. So, uh, <laughs> So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, all, all seriousness, uh, Coach, I want to thank you for your support of our mile relay team in our decision not to run Abington High School after beating them in the state meet. And in the process, we broke the state record. Uh, as long as I can remember, in the Chester, Montgomery County, Coachville has always been one of the premier schools in basketball and track, and we are usually near the top in the state in the respective sport. To be honored at the best school in sports in the state of Pennsylvania is to be cherished forever. And when it's all said and done, being remembered and having memories is what it's all about. That's why we have friends and family to remind us of our past deeds. Some you're proud of, some you wish you could forget, and some you, you wish never happened. <laughs> but they all contribute to who you are. Being inducted into the Coachville Hall of Fame is truly a blessing. I feel especially grateful for this award. Again, thank you all. Thank you for remembering. Our next inductee is Joe Begar for golf. Joe is the third golfer to be inducted into the Chester County, or excuse me, into the Coastal Sports Hall of Fame. This is good for me. I mean, I got the opportunity to meet Joe, even though he was four years older than me, through some mutual friends. Uh, I hit it off with Joe real, right off the bat. He was a very likable person, and which I didn't know, he liked to clown around. Uh, Joe was 10 years old when he began making money right here at the Coastal Country Club caddying. His, so his summers were spent here. His father was an avid golf, golfer and himself built a chip and putt course in their backyard. So that's where Joe picked it up. Uh, Joe in 1963 made the varsity golf team while still in junior high school. And you got to remember back then junior high school, Gordon North and South were still junior high schools. They had sixth, seventh, I mean, excuse me, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So Joe made the varsity golf team as a junior high. Uh, and you know what, he, he did very well as a freshman. Coach Hemlock said that uh, he expected him to do well, but not that well as a freshman. So after an outstanding freshman year, the next three years, Joe was the number one golfer. So he made number one as a sophomore, and one of his accomplishments that year is he shot a 69 against the number one ranked team in the state of Pennsylvania, which at the time was Hershey. 1965, the Raiders upset Hershey, and Joe defeated his, per, his opponent that night. And that gave, and then the following week, they played Westchester Henderson, beat them, and that gave Coastville Chessmont Championship. And then right after that, Joe played uh, golf against Scott, and that, or excuse me, against Pottstown, and that year he finished undefeated. 1966, Joe's senior year, he was unbeaten for, in play, and that gave him the first 
Chessmont champion ever from Coatesville in golf. One thing you're going to see tonight, is, and I, as I was reading through everybody, is tonight, remember history. There's numerous inductees tonight which made history or the record books in one way or another. And this was one right here. Joe was the very first golfer ever from Coatesville to win a Chessmont championship. <clears throat> And then talking to Joe's family, I talked to his cousin Mike on, or excuse me, Lou on the phone for I don't know how long. Uh, Joe was a very patriotic person, and unfortunately, it was one of the most turmoil, turmoil times of the year. The Vietnam War was going on. Joe enlisted in the service. Uh, Joe was sent to, after basic training, Joe advanced to infantry training and he earned badge for marksmanship, and after that he was deployed to Vietnam. Joe was sent to Vietnam in April 69, was wounded in May of 69, recovered, was sent back to Vietnam in July of 69, and unfortunately Joe was killed on a combat mission in August 20th, 1969 at the age of 20 years old. <clears throat> and you know that we've had quite a few people from Coatesville that have lost their lives in Vietnam in that, in that thing. So. Joe was a truly remarkable person. Uh, he earned two Purple Hearts, a Combat Infantry Badge, and a Bronze Star. And he was a very selfish, dedicated young man. So like I said, I got the opportunity to meet Joe, and I'm a better person for it. So at this time, I would like to introduce Jerry Begar. Jerry is Joe's brother, and Joey Bo jo er, Jerry will be receiving Joe's award tonight. Jerry? <clears throat> This will be pretty well scripted. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for attending tonight's ceremony. The coastal area has many athletes and we feel privileged to be a part of it. I'd like to thank all the committee members of the Athletic Hall of Fame for their dedicated hard work in making the difficult decisions which make this yearly event possible and we wish them continued success in the future. My special thanks to Bob Coulter for his interest as well as his suggestion to use the Chester County Historical Society to obtain copies of articles from the Coastville record covering golf matches during the 60s. These records were excellent in their professionalism and description. Also, I'd like to thank Coastville Country Club for hosting this event and for designated Monday mornings for the caddies of the 60s to play for free. I'm honored to be, accept, be able to accept this award on behalf of my brother Joe, who along with my father would be elated. Most of Joe's golf skills came from the encouragement of our father who loved the game and participated in a lot of Lucan's tournaments himself. Our backyard was converted into a chip and putt, which was so much fun for everyone and a good place to hone golfing skills. Joey was a competitor. He would never give up, and he wouldn't ease off, even if he had his brother seven down after 10 holes. He kept the hammer down. And again, I would like to thank all of you for being here. Enjoy your evening. Go Red Raiders. Next athlete is Kalina Gray. There's, there's one thing in Coatesville that we have, and we have a history of outstanding families with multiple outstanding athletes. It started with the Pearls. There's four Pearl brothers in the 1920s that were phenomenal athletes. Two are being recognized tonight. One went in last year. Then it went to the Joe family. Then it went to the Lewis family. Then it went to the Primani family. Now it's the Gray family. And there's another family up and coming right now to high school, the Young family. So we have a history of multiple families with outstanding athletes in their family. And Kalina is one of them. Kalina is a four-year champion in field events for track and field. Kalina and her sister, who was inducted last year, Tavon, formed probably the best 
tandem of female athletes in track and field that we have ever had. <clears throat> Kalina holds school records in shot put discus, both indoor and outdoor, and several invitational meets. And when we asked people to submit information for us, she sent in a sheet with, with, with three pages on it. <laughs> I said, there's no way that we can, go, we can go through all that. So we had to pare it down. That's just how, how, what kind of athlete that Kalina was. She, complete, she competed in four years of championship meets, chess months, districts, Pennsylvania State Championships, both indoors and outdoors, Nike Indoor Nationals, New Balance Games in New York City, and of course the Penn Relays. And her finishes were on three sheets of paper, so we couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't show them all. But a couple of them, as a freshman, she was first in the shot put in a chess mount, third in the indoor state meet, sophomore, first in the chess mount in both shot and discus, second in the district, in the district in discus, junior, first in the Chester County indoor meet and shot, First in the district in Chessmont Championships, second in the PA Indoor Championships in, so in shot. Her senior year, first in Chester County Indoor in shot, third in the New Balance Games in New York City in shot, second in the PA Indoor Championships in shot, first in the Chessmonts in both shot and district, second in districts in both shot and districts, and third. So you know what, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot more. Kalina was all Chessmont, all area, all district, all southeastern Pennsylvania, all state. Went on to New Norfolk State University, where she th threw discus and shot down there, received numerous MEAC awards. So it gives me great honor to introduce Kalina Gray for induction. <laughs> too. Um, first, I want to thank God for blessing me with these talents that he's given me and the ability to do what I've done. Without him, none of that would have been possible. I also want to thank Coatesville School, um, the Hall of Fame Committee, for thinking of me in this honorary award. Also, there's a few important people that I would like to thank. First off, being my mom, Miss <sighs> Vonsil Gray. Yeah. <laughs> She's the one that started it all. Then it trickled down to my sister, Tavon Gray, and then to me. It was a lot of competition in the house between me and her. But I knew I had big shoes to fill. Literally, we practically wore the same size. But, <laughs> but we really, we hit it off well. Anytime a school will see Coatesville come through, they know the throwers was taken home first and second. Really didn't matter the order, but I won it first and she settled for second a few times. <laughs> but yes, and I also want to thank one of my all-time favorite coaches, Tom Ingram, AKA Pop. Oh, <laughs> for the longest, when I first met him, I was in middle school and um, I had to practice on the other side of the fence because we wasn't allowed to practice together. And I heard him say, my sister say Pop. I'm like, why is she calling him Pop? I just don't understand, why is it Pop? But I then learned the following year why she called him Pop because he was like a father, an irreplaceable person, really. So all in all, we had to, trickled down, and he was pop. He had the rod and the sword. <laughs> All the, one of the main things that pop did was taught you many life lessons. One that he did say was, you compete against your best self. No one other, no one can beat you but your best self. So that carried that all the way through to college with me. And it was very, such a good feeling to see him when I returned home for pin relays, it was like, okay, I got my old coach back. This is great. He knows me. He know what I did wrong without even looking. He could be downfield looking at Javelin. Kalina, put your foot down. You left it hanging. You're writing your name. <laughs> 
And one thing that he did in high school was that if he found out that you was acting up in class or you was failing the class, first you got to go do the work. Then you had a serious consequence to pay. And that was quite a few, which is called the stadium steps. We had to run. A lot of us dreaded running, but we had to do it. And that really taught you to, to be on time, take care of your business, no horse playing class. It was, it was great. And then my coach, AAU coach, Kevin London. Who? Yeah. <laughs> that, Kev, that was fun. All summer long traveling from state to state, meet to meet. One thing he counted on for sure, not just me, but the great family really, bringing home at least two, three medals apiece for their events that they did. Never leave empty handed. There's many stories I can tell you about Coach London. And they're all funny. But when you've seen him out there in some jeans, it's a good day. <laughs> that heat index hit, he got on shorts. Oh, uh, he ain't got time for the foolishness. Handle your business and get back to the hotel room. No hanging out, no nothing. Just get back to, to the track, do what you gotta do, and we can leave. And I also wanna thank my, all my family that's here tonight. My godmom, Miss Tonto, my Aunt Sherry, my niece and nephews, cousin Daquan, Squirm, Shakia Zay. I wanna thank y'all for supporting me. I know I haven't been an easy person, but I'm the best person that y'all love. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one Kalina. Thank you so much. I love you all. Congratulations. Next, we're gonna move on to the first of our old timers. Class of 1924, Herb Pearl. And this is where, this is where that I can remember that the family started with the Pearls. The 1920s, last year, Bob Pearl was inducted, the, the youngest of the Pearl brothers. He was 1934, I think, if I remember correctly. Well, Herb Pearl is 1924. There was Herb, Walter, and Ross. Herb was one of the four brothers who excelled in, in, in uh, Coastal High School sports. Now you remember, you think back, 1920s, it's a whole lot different than what it was today. And you know, back then, guys played four sports, five sports. Uh, Herb earned varsity letters in all four sports, oh, excuse me, all four years in football and basketball. 1920 and 21, he played alongside his brothers for the, uh, Coastal High School. Herb was part of the 1922 undefeated team, which, which was coached by our Hall of Famer and a Pennsylvania Hall of Fame coach, Vicki Manuel. That was the very first that I can think of, their very first team that went undefeated in Coastal football history. After graduation, uh, he went on to, to uh, Winona Military Academy where he played varsity football and basketball, and then he went on to Temple and after, where he played multiple sports down there. And also one year, Herb played semi-pro basketball for a team that was from Coatesville in the Pendel League back in the 20s. Uh, his first job out of college was an ath director of athletics at Smyrna, and then he went on to Williamson Trade School where he had many accomplishments as a uh, coach for an undefeated baseball team, undefeated basketball team. Of course, back then, when them got after the 20s, then World War II kicked in. So Herb went on to, be, to uh, get a commission from, from, the, from the Army Air Force in 1942, where he served as an athletic officer and basketball coach. He was also director of physical training for the Army Air Force. And then after that, he came back to Westchester High School, where he went on to coach and lead teams to uh, many championship titles. So with that, it gives me great honor to introduce, where's Joan? Joan Jones, which is accepting the award for Herb Pearl. Joan is Herb's niece. Yes. 
thank you. I'm back. <laughs> we were here last year. My brother Ray and I were here last year, and we had this honor for our father. And as we were just told that there were four Pearl brothers, and they were all excellent in sports. So I thank you for this honor. And Herb, as, as it was just stated, and from his bio, you can see that he was an excellent, excellent coach and an athlete. But um, one thing that wasn't said, one of your very own, uh, Marty Connor, played under him, in, 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 and it was an undefeated basketball team that Marty played on, and, which was really great back in the day. And um, I'd also like to thank Marty Connor and the late Ed Wilkinson, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't know anything about, well, we, we knew our, our family were really excellent in, in the athletic department, but they told us stories that started us researching it. And um, the four brothers were quite remarkable. I think there should be a movie made of the four brothers. Yeah. But, <laughs> But unfortunately, Hollywood hasn't called me, but I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold out. Maybe they will someday. But I thank them, and I also want to thank our fa all of our family that came out and all of our friends from class of, of what, 63 for Ray and 67 for myself and everything in between. Uh, there's nothing like our high school friends. I mean, you know, we, what would we do with our high school friends? And it's always great to, co to come home. Um, I live in Texas now. All my cousins and, and nieces and nephew are from Chicago. So it's just so great to be here. So we thank the committee and we just think the Hall of Fame is just a wonderful organization. And um, I'm hoping I'm going to be back for another, <laughs> for another, we have a couple other purples, so I'm hoping we come back again. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you dear. Thank you, that was great. Okay. Like Joan says, she lives in Texas, while the next inductee, uh, Walter Woos Pearl, his daughter Mary, lives in Illinois. So we have people from all over the country here tonight, California, Las Vegas, North Carolina, Illinois, Virginia, uh, Maryland. Okay, so this is what it means to be, to be a Coastal Red Raider and have something like this. People come back. Okay, our next hold timer is Walter Woos Pearl. Uh, people have asked me how you spell this. I said, I don't know. I've seen information where it's W-O-O-P-S. I've seen information where it's W-O-O-P-S. I said, well, whoops, whoops is whoops, no matter how you spell it. <laughs> whoops was another outstanding athlete back in the class of 1922. Whoops won 12 varsity letters back then. He made the varsity football team in seventh grade. <laughs> seventh grade. <laughs> Could you see that today? <laughs> yeah, seventh, seventh grade. Uh, Walter played numerous years with his brothers, Ross and Herb. He played on various championship teams from Coatesville. They were active in Coatesville sports from 1918 and three of the four brothers were captains of the football team within a period of six years. Both Herb and Walter played for Punk Berryman, who's another All-American in 1921. He was an All-American at Penn State. And then, a, and then the next year, after Perryman resigned, they played for Vicki Manuel. So that just tells you these guys were amazing. Uh, Walter was captain of the undefeated team and his brother Herb they played every minute of every game for two years and won the county championship. Back then, it wasn't any Chesmont League. It was all county. And one thing I was intrigued by is, is uh, says both Walter and Herb thought athletes became a little kinder through the years. In their day, when the home team lost the game, the visitors were chased out of town. <laughs> uh, we like to do that to now, especially when we're playing Downingtown. But that's what makes it special, you know what? Because we pasted Downingtown East two weeks ago. And there's nothing like pasting Downingtown East. <laughs> and after graduation, whoops, attended Winona Military Academy also, and then St Staunton Military Academy in Staunton, Virginia. Uh, Walter played fullback and played it very well. On defense, he broke up numerous plays, but bolstered the line wonderfully. While on offense, he was a jack of all trades, running and passing. I think they, even, they, had, I think they had the forward pass back in the 20s. That right, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> Upon leaving Staunton. Yay. All right, buddy. 
he went to the University of Maryland and later on to Penn State. Uh, Walter was an active member in the Coastal YMCA where he and his brother Ross helped establish Camp Chesapeake and all of us that could remember know all about Camp Chesapeake. So with that, it gives me great pro yeah, pleasure to introduce Whoops' daughter, Mary Haybetler. <clears throat> I want to thank the committee for recognizing my dad and also my family and friends that are here tonight. My dad would have been 114 years old this year. And he would be so proud to be inducted into the Coatesville High School Hall of Fame because he loved Coatesville as much as he loved football. <clears throat> uh, my dad and his brothers, as they said, were all outstanding athletes, but besides that, they were outstanding men. And I think I can speak for my sister, my brother, and my cousins when I say they always made us feel proud to be pearls. And that's a great gift to be proud of who you are. Thank you. Our next inductee is also a history maker, Davida Phillips. Davida is the second female tennis player to be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Davida was a multi sport athlete when she was in school, tennis, indoor and outdoor track, and she was also a cheerleader. She served as captain her senior year. Davida was a four year tennis player, number one to singles all four years, four time MVP for tennis, captain for a single year, and her single year she won the Chessmont Singles Champ for the first time in school history. Uh, unfortunately, she was eliminated in the second round. Uh, she was also a member of the two time Chessmont and District Champion Girls indoor and outdoor track team. But what was really nice is Davida was an inspiration in helping create year-round tennis at Coatesville. It's called an addiction for juniors. This created a Coatesville tennis school, an inexpensive way for juniors to get year-round training in tennis. Hey! <laughs> After high school, Davida went on to play tennis at Gwen and Mercy University, where she played number one all four years. Uh, she was the captain of the team in her senior year. She went on to participate in both NCAA tournaments at Gwen and Mercy. Uh, after that, she went into dance. She started dancing at the age of three. Her first professional dance experience was with the Philadelphia Soul in 2009. Unfortunately, after that, the league folded. So she tried out for the Philadelphia Eagles cheerleaders. She made it to the finals, but did not make the team. So her next stop after that, she continued on with us, was with the Philadelphia 76ers in June of 2010. And Lisa, that's where she is right now. She is currently a member of the Philadelphia 76ers dance team. And she's been all over the world for being a member of the dance team. She's been to Spain, England. Uh, she performed at the NBA Global Games. She's also said she also had the privilege to be part of Alan AI's retirement ceremony and tributes to Wilt, Daryl Dawkins, and Jock, Dr. J. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Davida Phillips. <clears throat> okay. Hi. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for considering me for this prestigious award. I truly appreciate it. And I just also want to say, OK, so like he said, I did a, like a lot of sports. Um, I don't think my parents wanted me in the house. So they put me in as many sports as they could. <laughs> and with that being said, besides tennis, I just want to thank all of my coaches. I have like coaches here from like middle school. And um, I just want to thank you guys all, because I just feel like everybody has um, contributed to this in some way, because I've played tennis since I was three. 
and all the other sports. So I just want to thank everybody here. Um, and I also want to thank all my teachers that are here too. I see a lot of you going from elementary school to high school. So hi guys and thanks. But um, back to this. So um, I'm going to try to stick to this little script I have. So I can't believe it's been 10 years since I've graduated and it's been 11 since um, I won the Chessmont Championship. Um, I just want to start off by thanking my family and um, for their endless support and they, you know, they never gave up on me and I feel like they made this possible. Excuse me. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm like ridiculously grateful for my parents. Um, I, they always pushed me to be the best that I could and to always finish things that I started. And um, I'd like to thank my mom for being patient and understanding because my dad, I was on the tennis court like seven days a week, ev like all day for the most part. And I just want to thank her for being patient and understanding um, while sticking things out. And in between that, not to mention that I was going to dance practices too. Um, and then I want to thank Mr. He's not here, but um, Mr. Willie. He, uh, so on Sunday mornings, my dad started me having practices at six in the morning before church, which I, as a high school student, you're like, um, what, excuse me? And no was not an answer, like that wasn't an option, like you're, like, you're going. So um, Mr. Willie, he volunteered his time to come and he helped coach me and he would feed me balls at like six in the morning. And um, he also helped change my forehand grip, which if you understand tennis, you would know what I mean. Um, and then I want to thank um, Julius, who was one of my, um, probably like, he was my hitting partner, and he's my best friend. And he was also a person, so mind you, he was uh, two years under me, and like nobody our age would want to get up at six in the morning on a Sunday. And he voluntarily came he's crazy <laughs> but I thank you for that because um, you truly helped as well um, I also want to thank obviously I want to thank mr. Irwin who was my coach for all four years um, in high school I met mr. Irwin when I was in middle school um, and he took me under his wing um, he saw potential in me even when I didn't think that I had any he never took it easy on me. Um, we used to have to run. So the tennis court is five, lap, five courts, and we used to have, have to run 14 laps around the court every day before practice. And he used to put weights on my rackets and like increase my swing. So I just want to thank you for everything that you did, um, for just taking me under my wing, under your wing, like I said. And he used to take me to like tennis conferences. Um, he taught me about like meditation because tennis is 100% mental and I was a basket case in high school. <laughs> I just really, um, to this day, I'm still really competitive and I don't think I should lose ever. And I used to just get really, I like smashed a couple of rackets, you know, not my finest moments in life, but you know, hey, I'm like John Rackerow. But anyway, so, and then last but not least, I want to thank my dad. Um, if you guys know my dad, David Phillips, he, um, he's now the coach for the girls and boys teams at Coatesville. And if you ever saw me on a tennis court, you would see my dad. And he put me in tennis when I was like four. And um, he introduced me to the sport that I grew to love. Um, whether he was there watching if you didn't see him he was probably somewhere in the back having a heart attack because he couldn't watch my matches because you know um and like i he just like dedicated everything uh for me to play tennis um i would go to dance practice and then he would take me to tennis practice and then i would leave tennis practice and go back to dance practice and i did the same thing during the track seasons he would do the same thing. I would go to track, I'd run a meet, go play tennis, come back, run my track meet, everything was good. So I just want to thank you for everything that you've done for me. And even up to going to Gwinnett Mercy with me, um, even though my school was about an hour away from Coatesville, he was at 
every single meet, uh, every single match, whether it was home or it was away. And, um, and he's been like a key part in helping a lot of kids from Coatesville that play tennis to get recruited to Gwinnett or to other schools. So, yeah, I just want to thank everybody. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Here we go. Go see. Greg and he'll take you downstairs for a picture. Okay. Next up is Mr. Coatesville Country Club, Rich Saylor. Rich is a history maker, believe it or not. Rich. Now. I just saved 20 seconds by coming up early. <laughs> Greg's got the hook. Greg's got the hook on you, buddy. <laughs> okay, Rich became the tennis coach at Coatesville in 1973. He's a coach for 15 years. Rich is the winningest, so winningest soccer coach at Coatesville High School history. He had 116, 103 career record. His 1975 Red Raiders moved into Chessmont. That's when the Chessmonts were formed for tennis. Uh, his 1978 team allowed the fewest goals in season. Soccer, yeah, I'm, I got tennis on my mind. eight. His 79 Red Raider team posted 11-3 and three record, won the only league championship in coastal Red Raider history. His 83 team had the best record of 15-4 and two. And I've had a couple other people, I've talked to people that have played for Rich, and they said that Rich was a hard-nosed soccer coach. Uh, well, we all, we all know that. Strong work, ethic, strong work ethic and good sportsmanship. And I was talking to one guy, in fact, you know what, even Bruce Kurlowski, who owns Case, Case Collision, when I went down to see if he wanted to renew his ad, he said, no, you guys are putting in Sailor this year. <laughs> so, and he said, I played for Sailor, and he ran me to death. So he did pay for his ad, and I put him in op right opposite Rich Saylor in the program book. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So unfortunately, Rick, or Rich was a graduate of Octorera High School, but you know we won't hold that against him. But he did, he did have the smarts to move on to Coatesville as a soccer athletic trainer, ninth grade basketball, varsity track, coach of the year in 1979, and went on to numerous accomplishments after that. So I would like to present Rich Saylor for induction into Coastal Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. I have no idea what Norm Smith was talking about saving me time because I never heard him talk that much in 18 holes of golf. It's the longest I ever heard Norm Smith talk. Uh, I am so pleased and proud that Coastal Country Club was able to host an event of this magnitude for the Coatesville Hall of Fame. And I want a nice round of applause for our staff. Everybody's thanked the committee, but few people realize how many hours go into the committee meetings. And uh, I think they deserve a round of applause because I'll tell you what, they spend a lot of time trying to get it right, and they do everything with class. So let's have a nice round of applause for the Hall of Fame Committee. My family's here tonight. I promised I wouldn't make them stand up. Uh, my wife, Cindy, my daughter, Amanda, my son, Adam, both Adam and Amanda graduated from Coatesville High School. They both did really well. Coatesville High School is a great place to have your kids go to school. As with Norm, I have a ton of friends here tonight from Coatesville Country Club. It's really, really uh, uh, special to have you guys come here for us tonight. And uh, Norm and I really, truly appreciate it. Uh, I knew all my boys couldn't be here tonight. So uh, two nights ago, we had a special reunion for all the players that played for me uh, in the 70s and 80s. And we had 26 guys come, and we had the greatest time ever. Uh, we were here from 6 till 9 o'clock. We had the club till 9 o'clock. 10 to 10, I had to throw them out because they didn't want to leave. They were still talking. It was great. But a number of my boys are here tonight. If you played for me, stand up, please. Bobby, come on. Great, thank you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. As Bobby said, I went to Dr. Rare. A lot of people thought I went to Coatesville, but I, I attended Dr. Rare, and I'll tell you what, it, it was the best thing that ever happened because I played for the best high school soccer coach in the county, perhaps in the state, in Gene Davis. Uh, I learned so much from him. He died way too young, and he, he was a tremendous man. Uh, I went on to play for Coach Lurback at Westchester University. It was hard. He was hard to play for, but I learned a lot from him. And from the two of them, I established a uh, coaching philosophy. Uh, in 1970, my junior year at Westchester, I was in a class. It was a uh, uh, not an activities class, but uh, the professor, Jack Wintermute, said, boys, uh, we're assigning student teaching assignments for next year. He said, I'm going to name the schools that will take a student teacher. You raise your hand if you'd like to go there. Can't promise anything. And he started to call off names of high school. Now, I want you to remember, I grew up in Parksburg. <laughs> he said, uh, Lower Marion, uh, Radnor, Conestoga, Springfield Delco. And I sat there about crapping myself because I didn't know anywhere he was talking about. <laughs> And then he said, Coatesville. And I couldn't get my hand up fast enough. <laughs> Only two hands went up in the audience, me and my college roommate. He also went Dr. Rare. He didn't know anything either. And uh, we raised our hands, and, and, and that was it. And I'm going to tell you, um, I consider that a defining moment in my life. Because the following year, I was assigned to Coatesville, and I started to meet the best people that you could ever find anywhere. I met Angela and Ann, even though I was only a student teacher. A student taught for Paul Changer, Donnie Wilkinson, Mike Randler, and I had the best time ever. But then I thought, okay, it might be done. But I was also an athletic trainer for, in uh, college. I, I was the athletic trainer for Walt Funk for all four years uh, when he was the uh, varsity basketball coach at Westchester University. And that summer, I got a call from Ken Rozelski, and he said, we have a job. We'd like to you to come here and work at Coatesville. And I said, oh, that's great. He said, I want you to be the athletic trainer for Al Black. Usually, you get a job offer to be a teacher. <laughs> uh, Al Black was pretty powerful back then. I don't know if you, any of you knew that or not. Uh, so he, uh, they hired me to teach, and I went to Scott. I was with Joy Renfrew, Jeannie Burns, Russ Tapper. Had the greatest time ever. I did teach a couple years of science, even though I wasn't certified. Uh, <laughs> that was Ken Roselski at his best. <laughs> so after my first year, uh, Max Stuber called me in. He said, son, he called everybody son. He said, son, would you like to coach soccer at Coatesville next year? I said, Mac, there's nothing better in the world I'd like to do. I said, well, what are you going to say to Coach Black? He said, don't worry, I'll take care of Coach Black. I don't know how the conversation went, but I got a load of crap from Coach Black shortly thereafter. But Mac made it happen, and I was able to start coaching in 1973. Uh, Mac was a great athletic director. He took care of me like a son, like he called people son. Then I was able to work with Cal Beam, who was also a highly supportive athletic director for me. Couldn't have asked for more. He did everything he could for our program, followed by Chuck Carroll. And that kind of support was really greatly appreciated. Also, the reporters, when we weren't good in 1973 and 74 in the early years, Jerry Rudder, those guys all took care of Coatesville soccer players soccer teams, Rich Saylor, they took care of us because we were never disparaged in the paper. They always talked about how hard our teams worked, and I really, really appreciated that. And I, I'll thank Jerry Rudder to the day I die for how well I was treated. Some people ask me, what was our best team? You might think it was the, the team that won the Chessmont Championship. My best teams were the first and the last. I loved every one of those teams. Those kids worked harder for me than they ever thought they could. And quite honestly, uh, they achieved more than they thought they could, and every year was special, and every year was great. I haven't said a word about assistant coaches. 
because I want Dave Rohde to please come forward and join me at the podium. Dave Rohde. If you talk to Ross Kershey, he'll say Chuck Carroll. Talk to Keith Andrew, he'll tell you Dave Lapp. Talk to Harry Lewis, he'll say Tom Ingram or Carl Smith. And I can go on and on and on. A good assistant coach is gold to any head coach. My first year was Ned McFeely. Second year was Russ Tapper. I begged him to do it. His passion was tennis. He went on to coach at Westchester University as an assistant tennis coach. Then I approached Dave Rohde. I said, Dave, we became pretty good friends. So would you be my assistant coach in soccer? He said, I don't know a thing about soccer. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. I'll handle the practices. I'll handle the drills. You help me with everything else. Never missed a practice. Never missed a game. Sat through. Came to every summer league game, because we had our kids in a couple different leagues. Sat through endless hours of indoor soccer, where we tried to you know, do that during the winter. And uh, Dave Rohde was the best as assistant coach you could ever have. No head coach will ever, ever have success without a good assistant. I had the best, and he's a Hall of Famer too. Thank you. One thing that I can echo that Rich said, and that's the Coastal High School is a phenomenal place to go to high school. Just remember, you get out of education what you put into it. Our next inductee, Mr. Ron Artis. Now to me, Ron Artis played, just like last year's nominee, Jeff Hoffman, Ron Artis played in what me, this is my personal opinion, considered the golden age of coastal basketball. Even though we won a state championship in 2000, 2001, I consider the golden age of basketball in coastal the 1960s. Um, we had, for anybody that's old enough to remember now, of course the other younger ones aren't gonna remember this, there was nothing like going to a basketball game at Scott High School, sweating your rear end off, <laughs> packed in to the rafters, and if you didn't have, if, if, if you were lucky enough to get in, if you couldn't get a seat, then you stood at the east end by the doors. So, I mean, we were talking about a can of sardines, we were packed in there, but you know what? It was absolutely the best. I mean, it really was. You ask anybody that played in the 60s, and it was absolutely the best. Just try and remember, just try and think of the movie Hoosiers, only in a little bigger, bigger scale. That was Coastal High School at Scott High School in the 1960s. Ron played with some of the greatest high school players we ever had. Hubie Marshall, Kurt Marshall, our coach of the championship team, Scoogie, uh, Kenny Hamilton, Chucky Carroll, Cliff Robinson, Rosie Morgan, and last year's inductee, Jeff Hoffman, and I'm sure there's guys that, that I'm missing. But to me, that was it. Ron scored, uh, and then also at the Plester. I mean, you know, the Plester holds 9,000 people. They had 9,000 people at the Plester when Coastal played at the Plester. Ron scored 774 points in his good f f career, good for 21st all time. No three-point shot back here. Can you imagine what it would have been if we would have had a three-point shot with guys like Ron, Hubie Marshall, Kurt Marshall? The record books would have been a whole lot different than what they are nowadays. Uh, Ron was the leading scorer in his senior year and first team all Chestmont in 63. Ron had a varsity record of 53 and four. How many athletes can you say that on their teams they won 93% of their games? JVs were undefeated when he played. And the one thing that struck me the, the most was when we asked, I, I, we sent Ron information that all the inductees got and he responded about what type of awards he, he could remember. And Ron responded by, and I quote, during my high school career, I think I made the first team chess mod for two years. Most of the time I didn't know what was in the paper because I learned don't read the paper about yourself. 
your head may get bigger than your talent. I plead for the love of the game. That was 52 years ago. A lot of today's athletes need to heed that. Ron was an amazing basketball player. So with that, it gives me great honor to introduce Ron Artis. I thank the committee. First of all, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for still being here today. And I thank the committee, the guys that started this, the committee members and all. And everybody being here is just wonderful. But uh, it took 50 years. And today I found out why. Because I played with Hubie Marshall. <laughs> if you play with him, the guy was a great player. The problem was, you get a rebound, Levi, I used to let guys go so he could tip the ball. The ball would come to me, I look down court, and you're looking, there's Hubie. <laughs> you know, you couldn't help but throw in the ball, he looked so hungry, <laughs> you know. They said I was 21st. If I'd have had the ball a little more, I might have been 14, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know. But the idea is you play for the love of the game. You know, nowadays, you know, sports players, they do this, and it, you know, it's about money and everything, but I played because I love the game. And uh, we had a team that was a team. And if you win something, they might give me this, but it's not mine. It's everybody that I ever played with, everybody that I ever practiced with, the coaches, the administration that make things going. So when people get something, it don't belong to them at all. And that's the way, it's the thing you learn in life. Whenever somebody does something, you can look around. They never do it by themselves. They can't. We're not made to do anything by ourselves. We're made to be together. We're made to work together. And the idea, the idea of sports, especially a team sport or whatever, even if you're playing an individual sport, you learn to work together with each other. And if people would learn that, it'll make the whole world a lot easier. And that's all I got to say. absolutely correct in that aspect. Uh, the team sports uh, and today's athletes, just remember there's no I in teams. Uh, at this time I just want to take a, uh, a minute. I want to introduce the Hall of Fame leadership for the next four years. This is my last year as president. Uh, it's been interesting. <laughs> uh, I want to thank every a lot. Thank my committee members. This is the best committee you could ever have. All you got to do is ask for something, and somebody has stepped up. The committee the chairman of the committees have been phenomenal. I mean, look at this. Mike Luke is the committee chairman, and this is absolutely phenomenal tonight. So uh, I thank everybody that's helped me out over the last four years. I thank my family. They're all here tonight. I thank my wife for putting up with phone calls and me going out and texts and messages. It's, it's been, I truly enjoyed it. So maybe after starting in January 1st, I'll be able to get back to two blo or one blood pressure pill. <laughs> <laughs> so the officers for the Hall of Fame committee started in January of 2017. Our president will be Scott Kershey. <laughs> Vice president is Jeff Chalfont. <laughs> Secretary will be a Hall of Famer herself, Terry Johnson Lynch. Where's Terry at? Okay. And the treasurer is going to be good old reliable Gary Gill. Gary's going to stay on the treasurer. I don't think we could get anybody that wanted to do it anyway. <laughs> but it's been, I thank everybody. It's been truly a blessing. And one person I, I would be remiss if I don't thank, and that's Rob Fisher. Where's Rob at? Rob has been an amazing help. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in keeping in touch with the high school. When Before Rob retired, all I had to do was send Rob 
a phone, a phone call, a text message, an email, and he got it done for me. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So I hope we keep up the good work. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it, buddy. <clears throat> okay, next up, Mallory Lyons, softball. <clears throat> Mallory graduated in 2010. Uh, when the first thing she sent in on her resume was she graduated with a 4.2 GPA and number 20 in her class. <laughs> Mallory played four years of softball at, uh, at Coatesville. She also played basketball as a freshman and a sophomore. She was a three-year varsity starter. <laughs> Somebody's unhappy. <laughs> Where she DH and pinch hit as a freshman. During her high school career, she posted a 403 career batting average and a 977 career fielding average. That's truly amazing. She played shortstop her senior and junior years. Her sophomore year, she was second team all Chessmont at third base. Junior year, first team all area all Chessmont team captain. Team award for best offensive player. Her senior year, first team all Chessmont, all southeastern Pennsylvania, all district. And she wanted to she was team captain and won a team award for the best defensive player. Uh, her senior year, the 2010 softball team went deep into the playoffs. Other than the, 70, the 75 team, uh, this was probably the deepest that the softball team went in 25 years. Uh, they started out the same way, just like the 75 team. They were the underdogs, but just kept winning and winning and winning. And they ended up losing a heartbreaker two to one. And the day that they lost was graduation day. So the softball team had to hurry up and get back. So she said she barely made it to graduation, but she made it. Uh, she went on to Bucknell University, received a scholarship up there, played four years, and she started three out of the four years. She graduated in Bucknell with a double major, political science, philosophy, and a minor in economics. So, yeah, heavy workload. So she's currently working for Zippy, Zippy Shell in Washington, D.C. as a senior logistics coordinator. So with that, it gives me great honor to introduce Mallory Lyons. For coming out today. I want to make this short and sweet uh, because my family has been telling me that the whole time. Um, <laughs> mainly I just want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for having me here today and having all of you here today. Um, the biggest uh, support system that I want to thank, as you heard from the cheers, is my family. Um, in all of my softball games, I always had the biggest cheering section. <laughs> and um, they've been great. Part of the reason why I got here is my mom. Uh, she would always make me have catches with her in the backyard, and every time I threw it over her head, she would go inside. So <laughs> I wasn't able to practice if I wasn't good. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank you all for coming out today. Um, it's a great honor to accept this award, and I really appreciate it. Our last two inductees are both history makers. Up next is C.J. Gray. <laughs> the first and foremost thing I can see to say about C.J. Gray, everybody knows the history of coastal sports, coastal history of football. C.J. Gray is the all-time leading rusher in coastal football history. 5,828 yards on 654 carries for 8.9 yards, Garrett, and he also scored 58 touchdowns. Uh, as you will see, CJ is not the typical football player, running back that you can see, but you know what? He's in the same line as, as the sprinters like Charlie Hicks was, like Mark McWilliams was. And once them guys went through the line, CJ, it was amazing. He was such a good small, small guy, Boom, he took off. He was, had that sprinter speed, gone. You would never catch him. And we have another one in there in high school today. That's the same way. 
Uh, as a sophomore, CJ broke Tony, Mill Tony Miller's single season rushing record of 1705. He had 1,798 yards as a sophomore, 2,213 yards as a junior, and 1,500 yards as a senior. CJ is number seven in the Pennsylvania all-time leading rushers. He's a three-time winner of the Jeff McWilliams Award for Offensive Back of the Year in Coatesville Football, MVP in 2004, Valor Bowl MVP in 2006, three-time Mini Maxwell Award recipient, three-time All-Chestmont running back, first-team All-Southeastern Pennsylvania, second-time, two-time All-State back in 2004, 2005. And also, CJ also competed in track. He was a 2003 Chessmont champion, 100-yard dash, and ran 10-6 for the 100-yard dash, which is still a coastal record today. He was fourth in the PIAA State Indoor Track Championship and ran for a couple years at the Penn Relays. So it gives me great honor to introduce CJ Gray. City of Coatesville, man. It was, it was love. You know, I appreciate y'all. You know what I mean? Man. Man, of course, the street I grew up on, Coast Street. You know, Coast Street. Coast Street. You know, thank you. Um, uh, of course, it, it, coming and playing for Coatesville was a, a lot of running backs coming through. You know, you want to hear the Tony Millers, the Dwayne Millers, the Abel Joes, the Ty Hackens, the Stephon Lewis. And my name's at the top, you know. And I appreciate that, really, like, you know, it did come easy. Hard work, long nights, and, and I appreciate everything, you know. I, I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Fisher, <laughs> my man. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I understand you a little more, you know what I mean, because uh, you a little dude, you know what I mean? I only respect little dudes, you know? I don't know what respect little cats, you know what I mean? So, that's just what time it is right now. But you, your entire family, I appreciate you guys embracing me and doing, you know, just involving me in everything and, you know, picking up, you know, you know, y'all know what time it is, man. Y'all know my stuff. Y'all know. Y'all know. I love y'all, you know. I love y'all. And you're, you're so Robbie. <laughs> Robbie, man. Thank you for being a, a genuine friend, man. Uh, a genuine friend, you know. Not a bank what you missed. Not a game you missed every yard, you know what I mean? You was there. And, uh, you used to write me things before every game. Every game. It's 10 years, yeah. Every game you would write me something. Every game, yeah. Every game. Every game. Genuine. Genuinely. Uh, my sisters. <laughs> it wasn't easy growing up in the house. So. <laughs> See, uh, y'all wonder when I got it. You know what I mean? I got it. Uh, and of course, uh, my brother is there. Uh, Coach Kev, get some. Get some. And get some more. Like, you know what I mean? I appreciate everything you've done. You were the first to believe in me. Uh, you know what I mean? You put that, the heart that I had, you gave me that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's no secret I'm small. You know what I mean? But my heart goes for days about that action. You know what I mean? And you put that in. I appreciate all of that. You know what I mean? Just embrace me as your son. You know what I mean? Like, treat me as your son. Two pounds you paid for. You I appreciate everything you've done for me, man. Real summers, all of that. I needed that. Just, I see you all my brother, my family, and you know, last but not least, <laughs> you were truly mom, you know. <laughs> Mom, uh, I appreciate everything, everything you've done for me, you know, everything, the sacrifices you made to make sure I have the tip, zero to 120 degrees there, you know what I mean, screaming, I know I was cool if I come out at the locker room and I see my family there, 
it's whatever, it's game time. We can get busy. You know what I mean? But just just the way my attitude that come from you, my heart that come from you, everything, the morals you set me, period. I got teach them the same way to my own kids that sit right there, right now. The stern one. Coach Gray, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Everything. You don't even know. I, I could go on for days and days and days and days. Here you go. Here you go. But you know, I don't say it too often, but you know how much I love you. And uh, also, congratulations to the class of 2006, my fellow Vinny Bell, known me to be there. Congratulations, you know what I mean? But uh, it feels good to, you know, end on top, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear about who broke what record or who did this or who did that. Like, my name is on top. You want to talk anything, go to the, go to the high school and look on the wall. Uh, thank you. stats since he took over as baseball coach 25 years ago. And Vinny has put up some of the most productive offensive statistics in coastal baseball history. Uh, in the seven offensive categories compiled for a single season, Vinny's in the top three in five of those categories. In the seven offensive categories compiled for a career, Vinny is also in the top three of those categories. As a sophomore, he batted 500. As a junior, he had 403. As a senior, he had 557 for a career batting average of 490, which ranks him number one in Coastal Baseball batting average. <laughs> His career stats at Coastal were 210 at bats, 103 hits, 78 RBIs, 96 runs scored, 56 walks, and 47 extra base hits. Vinny was truly a, uh, one heck of a uh, baseball player at Coastville. After that, he went on to play college ball at West Virginia. Vinny was drafted in the 28th round after his junior year, correct? Uh, of the 2009 Major League Baseball draft by San Diego Padres. So 28th round, but you know what? He did it. He was traded to the Tampa Bay Rays in 2012. Then made his major league debut for the Tampa Bay Rays in 2014. And with that, Vinny became the first player from Coastal High School in modern day baseball to get a base hit, or an at bat and a base hit in a major league regular season game. <laughs> and you figure we've had, we've had some amazing baseball players come from this town. So Vinny played seven years in the minors, finished with a career at batting average of respectable 279. He was signed by the Mets in, 20, in 2015, where he finished his career. So it gives me great privilege to introduce Vinny Belnobi. and then to Pro Bowl, 
I wouldn't have reached my goals, though, without my mother and father. Their everlasting dedication and support for myself and my career have meant the world to me. My father purchased me a bat cage when I was uh, in eighth grade going into ninth. He built light poles and put lights out there, and I would be out there hitting it 10 o'clock at night. And I'm sure for those four years in high school, my neighbors hated me. <laughs> um, but it all paid off. And I got to see and play baseball in about 40 states, and eventually reaching my life goal of playing in the big leagues in 2014. I'll never forget that July 3rd, 2014, playing in Detroit Tigers Stadium in front of 50,000 people. My first big league hit didn't come until August, but it was all former Cy Young winner Max Scherzer. One thing I've always held dear throughout my life was that I was always proud where I came from. Whenever someone asked where I was from, I would proudly say, Coatesville, a small steel town about an hour west of Philadelphia. I bleed red and black no matter what state or city I was in. I was always online checking the school sports teams, seeing how everybody was making out. I had some of the best years of my life in high school. I got to learn and play for Hal Ziegler, Chad Ovar, and the late Donnie Lawrence. Those group, those group of guys taught me how to play the game, play it right, and play it hard at all times. My favorite moment in high school was the 2006 varsity season. We captured the Chestnut title, the District 1 title, and uh, we were 23 and 0 going into the states, and we ended up losing the first game in the state playoffs. But I learned so much in my high school experience that the transition to West Virginia was just a breeze. Just go out there and have some fun is what my father always told me, and I, I did. I loved every second of it, and I accomplished, and most of all, I'm honored to be from this city. I've been selected to be in this prestigious Hall of Fame, to ride in the annual Christmas parade, to teach our younger generations how to play the game, and hopefully be a positive role model to the youth not only in our city, but around the world. I'm a firm believer everyone has a purpose on this earth, and it's only in your possession how you leave your mark. I'd like to thank all the Coatesville Hall of Fame committee for this honor. It was truly a blessing. Thank you, and let's go Coatesville. I thank everybody for being here tonight. I think it's been a truly memorable night. Everybody, if you want to drink, the bar is, the bar is open in the back. So thank you very much. Have a safe trip home, and we'll see you same time next year right here. Thank you very much, everybody.